So I, I want to tell you about one of my favorite research projects that I've been involved with. It's a joint project with a lot of people uh, over a number of years. The primary contributors uh, were, uh, collaborators were Mickey Rubenstein, Neil Wadua, and Professor Fredo Durand, who just spoke. So I'm so glad to have an audience to tell you about this. <laughs> um, so <laughs> microscopes and telescopes are really, obviously, important parts of science. They let us see things that we can't otherwise see. Uh, see the very small things, see the uh, things far away. And we use these instruments to, to reveal aspects of nature that are otherwise hidden from us. We've developed a computational microscope that reveals a sort of a separate aspect of nature that's hidden from us. And, and uh, unlike these optical systems that amplify uh, size, this motion microscope amplifies motion. So let me show you an example. Uh, suppose uh, you're a parent of a perfectly healthy newborn. This is the newborn baby sleeping. And you wonder, is the baby breathing? Well, you can use the motion microscope to <laughs> to analyze those small motions and amplify them to let you see them. So like, like a microscope or like a telescope, this uh, is sensitive to what's out there in nature and just brings out to the forefront, lets you see those aspects that are otherwise hidden from you. In this case, lets you see the motion. Now this thing uh, we feel is useful in many different aspects. Uh, first, let me tell you how it works. We, we've developed a number of techniques to, to do this processing. Here's the simplest one. Normally, an image is represented by pixels. You can do a transformation and represent an image instead as a sum of lots and lots of little wavelets, little tiny ripples at different positions, different phases, different orientations, and different scales. Okay? But if you have a pair of those wavelets, a sine phase and a cosine phase, the change in the ratio of the sine to the cosine phase tells you about perhaps a very small motion that's going on at that location, orientation, and scale. So it's just kind of brain dead simple. You take the image, transform it into this wavelet representation, measure the change in phase at some temporal frequency that you might be interested in, amplify that change in phase. So if it's becoming a little bit like a sine wave, make it a whole lot more like a sine wave and then transform back to the pixel representation. Do that frame by frame, and you get the result. And it, it, it's really rock solid. It works very well. It's a signal processing technique. And let me show you some examples in the world where you can use this microscope to see vibrations that you otherwise can't see. And I should say one of the mantras I have in my mind is um, tiny vibrations are precursors to big catastrophic vibrations. So, so if we can measure these things and analyze them while they're tiny vibrations, then we can use them to study the physical process that's going on or to warn us that something bad might be going on later. So there's a bridge um, in uh, New Hampshire, uh, at the border of New Hampshire and Vermont. Uh, and it, it's up at the top right there. You see it's, it's a drawbridge. Uh, and, and the center part comes down, and it makes kind of a jolt to the system. So here's a video from afar. The, the drawbridge part is off to the right. And here's just ordinary video playing. Now, without the motion microscope, you can't see anything unusual going on there. But let's use the mic motion microscope to analyze the temporal frequency corresponding to one of the torsional modes of the bridge. Here's the result. So of course, it doesn't feel like that. But so that information was in the original video, but you just couldn't see it because it was too small to visualize. And uh, this lets us see that vibration that's going on. And now, in this case, it wasn't a dangerous vibration. But our microscope lets us see it, lets us analyze it. And um, let's see, I think I can play it again. Yes. And uh, understand what's going on to the very small motions. So where else might this be useful? Looking at people is uh, a good uh, thing to do with this. Uh, top left is uh, an ordinary video of my daughter. I asked her just to, just to just, uh, stay still. And then um, at the top right is amplifying the low temporal frequencies. And what can you see is going on there? Not, I'm repeating. I have to keep repeating it. But there you can see her breathing amplified. Sorry. Now, the bottom left 
is higher temporal frequencies between one and two hertz. And here we see little micro expressions that are amplified. We don't know whether you can read her mind based on these. Um, sometimes people ask. <laughs> And then the bottom right shows uh, higher temporal frequencies still being amplified two to four hertz. And um, there you just see uh, saccades of the eyes, and, and you see that noise in the background is beginning to be amplified. You can look at someone's eye. Same story. Left is the input video. It has all the information that we're re-displaying to you on the right-hand video, showing the amplification of little micro saccades in the eye. And it doesn't it look like a bowl of jello moving underwater? And I think that's probably close to what it actually is. So when a ballet dancer stands on one foot and uh, stands motionless, you know there's control systems going on there. You know if you just really froze her, she would fall over. So let's visualize those. So again, the left is the input video and the right is motion magnifying it, revealing all the little controls that a dancer has to make in order to keep from falling over. So we might use that to train a dancer. We might use that to identify uh, motion deficits. And you can also take this computational microscope and point it through an actual microscope to amplify small motions in uh, microscope videos. So this is joint work with uh, Denny, Professor Denny Freeman in this department and uh, colleagues of his. They identified another mode for hearing by these surface waves across a particular tectoral membrane. And again, the same story. Top line shows what they see through the microscope. The bottom shows that top video, but motion magnified to reveal those surface acoustics waves that are going across this membrane, which lets them and their colleagues really see what's going on in this new mode for hearing that, that they identified. So what else can we use this for? That's what I want to close with. Where do you think this might be useful? One of the directions of interest that I would love to explore is uh, internal imaging in medicine. So a stethoscope, what is a stethoscope? It takes little sounds and makes them more loud. So basically, that's a, a motion magnifier at particular frequencies that we can hear. And that's, uh, based on its ubiquity in medicine, quite useful in diagnosing uh, issues inside our bodies. So if that's useful, then surely motion magnifying other imaging modalities, looking at our body, ultrasound, um, uh, looking at the eye, may also be diagnostically important. And I would love to study this. Uh, I'd love to hear your suggestions for other places where, uh, where this motion microscope might be useful. There are companies that have licensed this and are using it for uh, vibration analysis in mechanical systems. If you Google motion magnification, you can see some of those companies. And um, here's pointers to other work. And, Thank you for your attention.